Hi, everybody! Welcome to Rico's Reading Room. Today, I am going to read an educational book. I know you'll love it. Flower Talk: How Plants Use Color to Communicate, by Sarah Levine. Illustrations by Marcia Dianz. If you have the same book, go grab it so you can read along with me. Hey you, pst, down here. That's right, I'm a plant, and I'm talking to you. But don't get too used to it. We don't make a habit of talking to humans. I want to clear up some of your crazy ideas about what the colors of our flowers mean. We sit here rowing, minding our own business, while you guys go on about how red roses stand for love and white ones are good for weddings and all kinds of mushy, ridiculous stuff. What a load of fertilizer! We're not using flowers to send information to you, so butt out, okay? We use our flowers to talk to the animals. Why? We need some help down here. What would you do if your legs were stuck in the ground for your entire life? How would you eat? How would you drink? How would you get your pajamas on? We can take care of some things yourself. We get our food with help from the sun, and when it rains, our roots slurp up water. But we need help making our seeds, our babies. What's more important than that? Without seeds, there'd be no more plants. We'd be finished. Caput. To make a seed, we need pollen from a different plant of our same type. How do we get that? We can't just waltz over and take some. That's why we need animals. Here's what we do: we trick them into carrying it for us. We're nice about it, though. We pay them a little something for their efforts. Well, usually. How do we get them to help? We advertise. We hold up big signs. Our flowers are the signs. They say, "Come on over. We have a special treat for you." And believe me, they come. Who wouldn't? Especially if they're hungry. If we're in luck, they bring along some pollen from a flower they visited earlier. Do they know they're doing this? Who knows? And who cares? It works, and everyone's happy. So what's the deal with colors? A flower's color invites specific animals to visit. You seem like a bright kid, so I'm going to let you in on the conversation. Then maybe you could let me do a favor and tell the other humans about it, okay? Red flowers are usually talking to birds. The red flower's message is a top secret one, for birds only. Most other pollinators are insects, and they can't see the color red. A red flower says, "Hey hummingbird, over here, carry my pollen, and I'll give you a sip of nectar." By the way, red flowers don't have much of an odor. Birds have a horrible sense of smell, so why bother making perfume for them? Blue and purple flowers talk to bees. Bees need flower pollen to feed their babies. They have special pockets on their legs to carry it home to their young. But some pollen always gets stuck on their bodies and passed. To the next flowers they visit, blue and purple flowers are saying, "Yo, bee, could you help me move some of this pollen and take some home for the kids? See, we can be thoughtful too." Yellow flowers are also talking to bees. Bees are our top helpers. I heard that scientists just figured out that bees have three favorite colors: blue. Purple and yellow. Took you guys long enough. We've known this for ages. That's why so many of us make flowers in these colors. We like the reliable help. Here's what a yellow flower says: 
Bees, barking basement this way. Free food. Some white flowers talk to moths and bats. Moths and bats fly mostly at night. And what's dark outside? What color shows up best? White, of course. White flowers are like giant signs that say, "Hey, come and get your free nectar here." White flowers also put out perfume as an extra guide to help these animals find them. Frankly, I don't care for it myself, but I guess to a moth or a bat, it smells pretty good. Brown flowers often talk to flies. Here's what they're saying: Get a whiff of our perfume. It's stinky, just the way you like it. This is true. Brown flowers reek like something dead and rotten, and flies need to lay their eggs on dead things so their maggot babies will have something to eat when they hatch. I know, so gross. But brown flower doesn't help a mama fly at all. She gets drawn in by the stench, but there's no meat there. Just a flower tricking a bug into doing work for free. The flower gets pollen, but the fly gets nothing. The only run thing around here is the deal. Green flowers aren't talking to anyone. Are they just shy? No, they don't talk to animals because they don't need help. Their pollen is carried by the wind. Plants with green flowers are just green all over because they don't need animals to notice them. Would you bother getting dressed up if you didn't need to? I know I wouldn't. Do animals only go to flowers that are their favorite colors? No, but usually they do. For example, butterflies are drawn more to a flower's shape than its color. Butterflies like a steady platform to land on and tubes filled with nectar to sip with their long, curly tongues. They visit flowers of many colors, but even butterflies have favorites: white, purple, yellow, pink, red, and orange. That's a lot of favorites, don't you think? It's been good chatting, but it's time for you to leave now. Go take a hike. I'm pretty busy. In case you haven't noticed, I'm making a new flower. It's going to be yellow with a nice roomy platform. I'm just about done with it. But before you leave, do you want to guess who I'm getting ready to talk to next? The end. Thanks so much for watching my video. Please click the subscribe button for more, and be the first to know when a video comes out by tapping that bell. See you next time.